It's Monday on Monday, where I am long on thoughts, but short on time. A private war. Or a spotlight on all the president's men wagging the dog at Syrian refugees. Tells a very focused story of the cost of modern-day civilian-focused war through the brave eye, sorry, of a modern-day civilian-focused hero, journalist Marie Colvin. So jumping right in, this movie is not hard to watch, but it is hard to experience as it exposes the truths hidden under the rubble and the fortunes of natural interests at stake. And so first off, I have to say a huge takeaway is not once did any violence or nightmarish scene or self-destructive reaction ever feel maudlin or glorified. A rare feat in a movie focused on, well, any kind of war, be it metaphorical poetry or any number of gritty Oscar winners. A Private War follows a very unique woman in a very unique telling of a very ubiquitous problem, getting our sustained care about the human cost of war. So, the film's execution of this? Well, Rosamund Pike's holistically encompassing performance, yes, that is an Oscar on the stove you smell, is placed in the middle of Colvin's narrative, while being surrounded and buffeted by Matthew Heineman's structure as a wartime documentarian, and the combination is powerful. Granted, I do admit the script felt a little imbalanced. The behind the enemy line scenes were engrossing and taut, showing me just enough along the way, whereas the interpersonal quiet dialogue scenes didn't allow me to infer anything with which she was struggling because it literally told me everything. But I get it. And the aggregate effect, well, is in a word, devastating. So I want to take a step back and look at the film's effectiveness and hope. In general, our cultural exposure to narrative film combined with the increasing transparency for onset safety gives us a baseline for understanding what we see on screen. One odd result is that no matter the horrors we see on screen, our imaginations will remind us we are safe. The staging, lighting, everything reminds us that we are safely watching a narrative. On the other hand, documentaries can be more visceral simply because it might actually be real, our reality TV circumspection notwithstanding. I found here a beautiful blend of those two from Heinemann, showcasing his strength as a wartime documentarian working in the narrative form. The feel, movement, lighting, dialogue, pace, not to mention the choice to include real-life refugees in some scenes, meta! all allowed me to get into the action without being distracted by the art or the easy out shaky camera lack of it, or even the in the moment overwhelming impact of any particular scene. Speaking of, being overwhelmed by a singular gruesome scene or act or sadness can shock us but will also trigger our fight or flight mechanisms. A wall will go up and we will rationalize what we are seeing as, okay, this is just a movie or a retelling, subconsciously closing our eyes and ears to any challenge of our existing cultural narrative. And knowing it's based on a true story will not stop the rationalizing. In some cases, it actually speeds it up for our imagination self-preservation. So one of Heinemann's successes for me then came from letting me let my guard down in the interpersonal scenes with Colvin. With my guard down, the devastation becomes insidious, spreading quietly throughout my experience at the pace in which Colvin's body and person deteriorates right before my eyes. I mean, She's not a wartime refugee, she's one of us, right? A safe viewer being entertained and slightly shamed for two hours? But no, her refusal to look away from the human toll of war strips away her natural defenses to keep death from decaying her body until old age. And as we go along with her, guard now down, it also strips away our existing cultural narratives that we are either better than because we think we're safe or that there's nothing we can do or that suffering Suffering, even in our own lives, is something we can ignore. Indeed, if we let our hearts become devastated, we open ourselves up. But herein lies a chance to rewrite the narratives as they should be, to embrace a story of hope where things can change, that until all things are made right and whole, we must, as stewards of our world, fight for, not with one another. And that, thank you, Ms. Colvin, victory is not the personal achievement in and of itself, but the achievement's echo, so far as it exposes that where once 
We're a culturally disparate society scattered in a diaspora of humanity. There can now be the ever-present gaze of daring heroes like Colvin to give us the opportunity to participate in the turning of weapons of war and cold divisiveness into tools of truth revelation for the purpose of social justice reconciliation. Even if that means first seeing the marginalized under the rubble as our friends and then possibly dying for them. Or what I mean is, yeah, this is a hard movie and I liked it. And that's my Monday. Now back to yours. Happy, happy.